Hi, Bill1911 here again. Hey, we've got a neat little piece to work on today. This is a 22 caliber uh, Ruger Mark III target pistol. Uh, I featured it a while back on another video where I was explaining a di uh, uh, different principles on how operating systems work in semi-automatic firearms. But today we're going to go ahead and clean this little guy. Um, it's a really neat gun, but it does have some features to it that uh, you're going to need to know about if you're going to get into this and clean it. Um, the first one is you're going to need a couple of tools. You are going to need a small screwdriver with this particular gun. Um, a lot of guns you don't really need a lot of tools in the way to take them apart, but with this one you're going to require a screwdriver. Now, I always stress keep ammunition out of the working area when you're working on one of these guns. With this particular gun, it is doubly important. Okay, first, we're going to verify that there is nothing in this gun. Okay, we're going to open it up. I'm going to lock it open so you can see in there. Okay, and I'm going to show you that there is nothing in the chamber. All right. I'm not getting a good view because of the light. All right, we're going to show you that inside the chamber, there's nothing in this gun. All right, we're also going to show you that the magazine is out of the magazine well. Well, here's where we get into a little trouble with this. In order to take this gun apart, we have to dry fire it. We have to take the tension off of the hammer spring. If we don't do that, we can't get the gun apart. So in order to release this, the trigger does not function unless we have the magazine in the gun, which I'm not wild about that feature, but that's the way the gun is designed and there's not much I can do about it. So we're going to verify that the magazine indeed has no ammunition in it. We're going to slip it up into the magazine well, and we're going to drop the hammer on the gun. I really hate doing that. It bothers the dickens out of me to do that. But, as I said, that's the only way we're going to get this particular gun apart. Now, I'm going to ask you to bear with me while I go over a couple of other things that are pretty important here. One of the ones that I wanted to run by you is cleaning rods. Okay, This is the one I use on almost all the pistols that I clean. Okay. I can't use it on this one because it's just too short to make it all the way through the barrel. Okay? It just won't go all the way through. It's too short. All right? So I'm going to need a longer cleaning rod like this one. Now, this one will go all the way through. All right? So that's what we're going to use on it. So in order to get this gun apart, um, there are some other little pitfalls that I'm going to show you along the way that can, can really kind of drive you crazy unless you know they're there. So we're going to go over those. Now, right back here on the back of the handle, okay, we have this whole weird lever assembly back here. Well, what it is, is it's a locking mechanism. Right under here, we lift up on this lever, okay, and push it open. Believe me, you cannot spring that open with your thumbnail. You'll just rip your thumbnail off. Okay, so we're going to open that catch. All right. And now we're going to kind of scissor this open like that. All right. Let me see if I can make sure you can see that. Scissor that open. And then we're going to kind of wiggle it while we're pulling down on it and extract it right out of the bottom of the gun. Okay, it's going to come right out. Now, this is going to be hard for me to show you this, but I'm going to try and show you what we're talking about. All right, I'm going to have to get the light in just the right place or we're not going to be able to see it very well. All right. Very difficult to get the position right so that I can show you exactly what we're talking about. On the bottom of the hammer, there is a little rod, okay? This rod, I'm going to try to pull it up so you can see it, is right here in the center. 
and it connects to the hammer. Now what can happen is there's this little crossbar pin down inside the handle right in here. Okay, that little pin right there, sometimes that little arm will drop down in behind that and get stuck when you try to pull the slide out. Okay, so if you start pulling it out and it doesn't come out easily, chances are what's happened is that strut rod off the hammer has gotten caught behind that little pin. So push the, the slide back forward all the way. Okay, we're going to push that all the way up forward. And then we're going to take our screwdriver and we're just going to simply push our hammer upward. Okay. At that point, we're going to turn the gun over, shake it a couple of times so that strut rod drops down out of the way. And then we can slide the bolt right out the back of the gun. Okay. So, the first time I took one of these apart, man, it took me the longest time to figure out that that strut rod was what was causing the problem off the hammer. So, that's about all there is to disassembling this gun so that it can be cleaned. Now, there are some areas like, oh boy, it's hard to see it. Okay, let's try that. Okay, right down in here, where it collects a lot of mud and a lot of junk, okay? And so we're going to want to get in there and clean that out real good. One of the other things that I wanted to bring up is specifically with 22 caliber. Normally, I like to use a cleaning jag to clean these things. But with 22s, I'm going to highly recommend the use of a bronze bore brush. There is a very good reason for this. There's something called the dreaded donut. Okay, I know that sounds funny, but... Um, and it's, it's not something that just cops like me eat too many donuts, although that is something we can dread. Um, what the dreaded donut is, is lead actually builds up in a donut around the throat of the barrel, okay? Because these 22 caliber, bu caliber bullets with this 22 long rifle, they are made of lead. And so, consequently, you do get some lead buildup in that barrel. So a bronze brush is going to be instrumental in getting that out of there. The other thing that you need to know with 22 caliber is that you're not going to use a full-sized cleaning patch. As you can see, we're going to use these little small ones here. All right. Now the reason why we use the small ones is that when we put them in the ferrule, which that's what this little eyelet piece is that goes with your cleaning rod. When we stick these through there, if they're too big, they go down over this cut down area around the ferrule and they'll actually lap over the top of the thick part of the rod. And once that happens, they're going to jam up in there and you're not going to get them through the darn gun. It's just not going to go. So we're going to use patches that are the right size for the 22. About one inch by one inch will do just fine. So we're going to need a cleaning solvent. Now this is a bore solvent that uh, the United States military uses. Uh, it's inexpensive and that's why I bought it. <clears throat> but we're also going to need when we lubricate the gun to use a specific, a specifically designed gun oil. We always want to use a gun, an oil that's formulated four guns because on a lot of guns there are some plastic parts in them okay this one has a plastic trigger okay the trigger is made of plastic and there are some a few other plastic parts in here such as right here on the side this is what they call the loaded chamber indicator I don't know if you can see it let me turn it over a little bit a little gray piece of plastic along here okay and this loaded chamber indicator is also made of plastic some plastics, when exposed to some oils, can expand, in other words, swell up, or they can crack into little pieces, okay? So 
we don't want that to happen. We're going to use a, a, an oil that's specifically designed for firearms. All right. Um, honestly, I have never seen any of the plastic parts in a gun that were damaged by something like WD-40. Um, but that doesn't mean that it can't happen. Okay. The trouble with these plastics is you don't know whether they're going to react to a certain oil until after you put the oil on them. So you might end up with a part that ends up going bad because you used the wrong oil. So I'm going to recommend specifically a gun oil. All right, so to clean this, what we're going to do is we're going to open up our solvent and we're going to wet one of these gun patches. All right. I'm just going to stick it right in the bottle. Now, once you've wet a patch like that, don't stick your rod back in the can. And the reason why is because if you've got crud on your patch, okay, and you stick it back in that can, you're going to contaminate your can full of, full of uh, solvent. So I always prefer to go from the breech end forward on these things. That's just the way I like to do it. So we're going to stick it right down the hole. We're going to push it all the way through the barrel until we get to the other end and then we're going to pull that patch back out. Now I'm probably going to do this a couple of times to make sure that I've got the entire bore wet down very thoroughly. Okay, With this solvent. And that's going to dissolve any powder uh, deposits that are in that barrel. So, I'm going to try and show you this again if I can. Okay, we're going to stick that right inside the chamber and push it straight forward all the way through the barrel. Alright, and then we're going to pull it out the other end. Now, this should be pretty thoroughly mopped with solvent right now. In other words, there should be plenty in there. So, from there, we're going to take our thimble out or ferrule if you prefer, and we're going to screw our 22 caliber bore brush in. If you would like, you can always put a little bit more of the bore solvent on that brush, but again, only on a brand new brush. If you've used this brush, don't stick it back in the can because you're going to contaminate your, your source. This is, however, a brand new brush. So. Once again, we're going to go right back up into that bore, and we're going to go back and forth a few times like that and brush that bore out very thoroughly. Now, I, as I said, I don't usually use a bore brush. The only time I use them is on 22 caliber, and that is because of those lead deposits that form in them. So we're going to run that in and out of there plenty of times so we've got it nice and clean. All right. We also need to go into that area that I pointed out in the, in the early part of just in front of where you go into the bore, right back here. All right, and we're going to clean that up. So with this, I'm going to wet my patch just like that. And I'm just going to take this kind of as a mop, and I'll probably use my little screwdriver to push it into the little nooks and crannies that are inside this barrel area and we're going to get this cleaned up all right now you're going to see once I pull this patch out of here that there is a whole bunch of mud up inside there now this happens because a lot of 22 caliber ammunition is it's made very inexpensively and so the powder tends to burn kind of dirty but again, it's also a lead bullet. So you're going to get lead shavings that get pulled off the sides of the bullet and get into all these little areas. Now, you're going to try and get that little pad in there to every little nook and cranny that you can get it to. All right. So you're going to get as much of the garbage out of there as you can. So let me see if I can show you this. You might not be able to see it, but I'm going to try to show you if... If I move this around, you might be able to see some little glittering specks. Okay, those are little pieces of lead 
that have been shaved off of those bullets. All right. Now, they quite often with these lead bullets, they will use what's known as copper washing that makes the outside of the bullet look as though it's copper jacketed. But believe me, they're not. All right. But I don't know. I'm hoping you can see those little glitters and things that I'm showing you. So, after we've cleaned the bore up, we're also going to want to clean the recoil spring. Now, this recoil spring isn't like you see like on a 9mm or anything like that. This thing's actually pretty darn small. Okay, so we're going to clean up this little recoil spring right now. So, we're going to start with wetting up another one of these patches with our bore solvent. I don't want to use this old patch that's filthy dirty because that's just putting more garbage back into the spring and what we're actually trying to do is clean it up so we're going to clean this guy up as best we can get as much of the garbage out of it as we can possibly get out and I don't know if you can see that little black spot but I just found a whole bunch of stuff right back here by the stem Okay, so we're going to clean that up. All right. After we get all these parts cleaned up, we're going to then move on to the slide, or the slide and we're going to clean everything up in there. Now, some of these little nooks and crannies are going to be hard to get into, but they're not impossible. You can find a way to get it done. One of the things you can do is you can purchase brushes that are specifically made for cleaning guns like this one you notice it has a very narrow set of bristles on one end and wider ones at the other these work very well but I want to let you know that you can also use an old toothbrush that you're no longer using um, now remember after you put this in this gun solvent don't try to put that brush back in your mouth because it'll kill you that stuff that gun solvent is some pretty nasty stuff if swallowed so we're going to get out all the garbage we can get out of here. All right. Okay, we're going to get in around here, around the breach itself, and get everything cleaned up that we can get cleaned up. Now, when you're working in a gunsmith shop, you're going to go a lot deeper than this. You're going to go in as far as taking the extractor out and cleaning all that up in there if need be. Um, so maybe at a later date we might do that, but right now I'm just trying to show you the basic maintenance cleaning of the gun. All right. So there we go. Now I don't know if you can see this little bar right here in the middle, but this is actually the firing pin right here. All right. Now there's a little spring in there. But the hammer comes forward, and it hits that bar right there, and it pushes it forward, and that comes right into here and whacks the rimfire cartridge, see if I can show you on this end, right in the bottom end, okay? All right, and that's what sets off the cartridge. So... Having a little trouble getting some of this out of here, so I'm going to use my brush in here and make sure I've got it cleaned out very thoroughly. Now, as you can see, that did an excellent job of getting all that garbage out of there. So, we can use the other end in these little troughs and places like that, and we got her all cleaned up. So, once we have the bolt cleaned up, <clears throat> we're going to put the recoil spring back into it. Now, how does it go in? This round-topped flat end is going to fit right into that slot right there and push into place. The other end is going to just kind of press a little bit forward and hook into place on the back, which, of course, it's fighting me. Now, get in. There we go. All right. So, you want to get this back part centered as best you can because when you put it back together this pin is going to go up through there in through the frame 
Okay? So, when we go to put it back together, we don't want to put it back dry. So now is the time when we're going to use our oil can. <clears throat> now, do you remember I showed you that little bar inside that was the strut rod off the hammer? All right. If you look in this little catch piece, there's a little, like, cup right in here, okay? And this little cup, all right, is what that strut rod plugs into, and there's a spring that runs down through the center of this unit, and that is the hammer spring. That's what shoves that hammer up and forward into the back of the firing pin. So... I'm going to put a little drop of oil down in there because that's going to be a wear point. That's where two pieces of metal are going to come together and they're going to tend to want to wear on each other. So we're going to put a little oil down in there. This part swings, okay, this pin, through here. So we're going to put a little drop of oil in there and make sure that's lubricated. Right down in here, same thing. Now, I'm going to try and show you this if I can get this back forward, okay? That spring that operates the hammer, I hope you can see the little ball. It's right down in there. That spring is also what operates this catch that holds everything together. And that's why this thing is so darn stiff and you can't pick it up with your fingernail without tearing your thumbnail apart. Okay, so make sure that you use a screwdriver. All right, this. All right, so let's finish lubricating this. We're going to run some oil right down that spring. Make sure it's well lubricated. Okay, and in these contact points, all right, we're going to get a little bit right down. Oh, I'm getting it everywhere. A little bit right in here. This is like a little piston with a spring that hits our extractor that causes our extractor to move, all right? So, we get that put back together. We're going to lubricate the outside of this bolt. Now, I got plenty of oil on that spring, so it's kind of like all over my fingers right now. So, I'm just going to rub it on that bolt, and it should work just fine. Now... We're going to slip the bolt back into the frame. If the bolt is twisted a little bit, it's going to come to a stop, and it's not going to want to go in. So you move it around a little bit until you get it square, and then it will just push right all the way forward, and you're set with that. So at that point, okay, this pin is going to have to go back through the gun. Okay, once we get that thing started in there, all right, once we've got it started in the hole, we're going to stuff it right up through, okay? Now, it's going to get stiff at this point, and you're going to have to push it a little bit to get it all the way up. Once it's all the way up, you'll see a button right up here on the back of the gun that's sticking up, and that's what you want. All right. I think my hammer went forward on me. So I'm going to have to, once again, put the magazine back in it, drop the hammer and push, or drop the trigger and push that firing pin all the way forward again so it's in the right place. Okay, I didn't have it quite right. So re-eject the magazine just on general principle and we're going to start this process again. All right, so once we're up into place, like that, we can pull that lever down, all right, now, you see how there's no resistance on this, how it's just falling, all right, the reason why is because the hammer strut rod is out of position, okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to hold the gun up like this, Shake that strut rod down so that it's going to go into its, into its seating point. Now, once it's in its seating point properly, we're going to see a little bit of resistance on the tail end of this. Now, we're going to pull it in, push the lock up, and at that point, 
Okay, what went wrong is the strut rod is out of position. It's not in the right hole. So, we need to pop it back loose. And get that strut rod back down where it belongs. Okay, let's try that again. Okay, now we got it put together right. Okay, if that strut rod isn't in the right position, you're going to know right away because things aren't going to move. It's going to be locked up. So once we've got it put back together, we're all set. Now, there is something I neglected to do, and that is I didn't run a dry patch down this barrel, which is something that I want to do. Now, we can do this with the gun assembled. It's not going to be a big problem. We're going to have to put our ferrule back on our barrel. Okay. Stick in a fresh patch and just dry out everything that's in that barrel. We can simply go in through the muzzle end and push it out through the back. and extract that patch out of that thimble. Now we can do that several times and that will get our barrel nice and clean. And after we've run several dry patches through it, I'm going to go ahead and put a fresh, lightly oiled patch through it. All right, and... That's got all that muddy garbage out of the barrel, so from there, I'm going to run a patch with some light oil in it and mop that barrel with a little bit of light oil. This is going to keep any kind of corrosion down out of that barrel. Now, on a stainless steel gun like this, it's really not that big of an issue to oil the bore. But you can if you want to. It's not going to hurt it. The one thing I didn't mention is that when you are lubricating your gun, you don't want to under lubricate it. You want to get it so it all the, the moving parts are oiled. But you don't also want to over lubricate the gun so it's drowning in oil and it's all of a sudden slippery and hard to hold on to. So, all right, that should do it. Okay, so that's about all there is to cleaning one of these things. Just remember those little pitfalls every one of them is wrapped around that hammer strut rod and that becomes an issue real fast on you so if it doesn't go remember don't force it because you can bend stuff so if you're if you're having trouble getting it back together look again at the position of that strut rod and make sure everything is where it's supposed to be hey if you've enjoyed this video, if it's been helpful to you and entertaining, please don't forget to hit the like button and by all means subscribe. And when you're done with that, come and visit us at AskBill1911.com. Hi, Bill1911 here. Today I'd like to talk to you about something that's very important to us, and that's your safety. Do not attempt any of the things you see on our videos until you have thoroughly reviewed and understood our safety procedures. Also, if you're under 18 years of age, do not attempt any of these topics without the consent of your parent or guardian. Thank you.